Hello and welcome back to another episode of Japanese Snack Reviews, a series where I try out the various snacks I get from the Japan Crate uh, subscription boxes I get every month. Today is episode 12, so get ready for, for more snacks because I've still got a ton to eat to catch up. Um, I think I'm like three boxes behind now. So we're going to begin this episode with Hyoroku Mochi. Uh, so this is mochi. Um, it's apparently a traditional, like, New Year's kind of thing. Uh, again, you can tell how far behind I am. And this is green tea flavour specifically. So um, it's oh, it's very it's very dark. Now you're probably thinking, ha, huh, you'll have to unwrap this. Uh, no. So I've learned the hard way. It doesn't really say in the pamphlet that comes with it, unfortunately. But this kind of plastic thing actually melts in your mouth. Um, it's meant to, you're meant to just put it in as is. Um, it's strange. I've tried to peel this off before, but it's actually not really plastic. It's like sugar plastic. Anyway, I'm gonna go try this mochi. That was quite nice. Um, I'm, I I gotta say, I'm kind of used to matcha green tea, which is a little bit bit more bitter, but a little bit more flavorful also. So this is just regular green tea, it's not matcha, and you can kind of tell the difference. It's not as strong, um, you get the aftertaste and everything, but if if you're not a fan of green tea, I don't think you'd really enjoy this. Um, I appreciate it is an acquired taste. I've grown to love green tea over the years, but yeah, um, I mean it's got that lovely mochi texture and stuff as well. I really like these type of things. I think they're just called mochi sweets, I guess, but I've had a few different ones now, and they always really impress me. They're very chewy, um, but yeah, the the flavour's not super strong. It is green tea, but it's not my favourite kind of green tea, to be honest, but not bad. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll definitely eat the rest. But right, on to the next snack. Alright, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. This is the Full Coffee Break Kit Kat. Um, so this is the Nescafe Gold Blend flavoured. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting actually because obviously Nescafe is American, maybe? Well, yeah, I'm assuming it's American or British. But there you go. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting partnership that Nescafe partnered with Kit Kat in Japan, but not in the West, which you'd think would be more simple. Also, I'm hyped for this because it is uh, milk chocolate. Now, I like white chocolate Kit Kats. They're, they're fine. But these are even nicer. So, I'm going to snap one off and take a bite. All right. So, that's interesting. Um, so, it's really nice, i got to say. However, I'm really not picking up much coffee flavour. Now, the booklet does say it's the mild flavour of Nescafe Gold Blend. I don't I don't know if I've ever had Gold Blend, so maybe I'm just not used to the flavour. But honestly, this tastes more like a dark chocolate Kit Kat than it does a coffee flavoured Kit Kat. So I had both pieces. Usually I just have one piece to like test out the flavour. But yeah, I've eaten both sides and honestly, the only flavour I'm getting is like... A bit of bitterness, but it's the same bitterness you'd get with dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate. So maybe it's that, maybe my mind is just not kind of like associating it properly and I'm like, oh, it's bitterness, it's dark chocolate maybe. I mean, it's really nice, the chocolate itself, I mean, it's Kit Kat, it's really high tier. It's not the white chocolate, so even better, it's nice and crispy. But yeah, I don't know, maybe it's just me, um, maybe I'm used to stronger coffee or something. But I'm just not picking up the coffee flavour. Um, I, I, I mean, I'll eat more of these and maybe I'll get more used to the flavour and eventually taste it. But yeah, um, interesting. Sort of disappointing, but it's not bad either way, honestly. Still really solid Kit Kats. On to the next snack. It is time for some chocolate chestnut. So these are quite interesting. Um, I want to say it was in episode 10, I think. We have the chestnut flavoured Kit Kats. So this is similar. I think, ooh, that's cool. So they are individually wrapped. Um, I think the middle is green or something, which is interesting as well. 
So these are just chestnut flavoured chocolate, I think. So I'm gonna go ooh, Z. Oh no, N. I'm assuming it's N or Z. I don't know. Uh, either way, I'm gonna go give it a try. All right, that was quite interesting. So that's quite thick chocolate, actually. Um, it's a lot harder than I expected it to be. And yeah, that was very nice. So it is actually very reminiscent of the chestnut Kit Kat as well. So I will say. As with the Kit Kat thing, I haven't eaten many chestnuts, so I don't know the flavour, you know, very well. That was quite nice, though. Um, the, the chocolate was really pleasant, and the chestnut flavour is quite subtle. Um, it's there, you can definitely tell it's like flavoured chocolate. But yeah, overall that, that is really nice. There's a decent amount of them in this bag as well. Pleasantly surprised with that. Um, right, on to the next snack. All right, it's time for a really interesting one, and that is diamond ring candy. And it's meant to look like a diamond ring, and it's got candy on it. Uh, this is a weird one from, I think it's the New Year crate, I want to say. Um, oh, hang on. Aha, there you go. So, I'm curious to see what it looks like. It, it, oh, oh, that's... That's darker than I expect it to be. I expect it to be red. I mean, I guess it is It is cola flavoured. I forgot to mention that, Cora. Um, cool. Now, will it fit on one of my thing? Hmm. Hang on. Wait, it's that finger I meant. To yeah, look at that. Ha ha. I marry. Wait. I think it's the left hand you put a wedding ring on, right? Anyway, um, I don't really know... I'm going to go have a few licks of this, and then I'll tell you what I think. That that sounded weird. BRB. And I'm back. So yeah, there's no reasonable way I'm going to get to the end of this uh, in this part of the video. I mean, I'm guessing the thing under this is like a plastic thing that, you know, sticks up a little bit that this is on. Oh, look, it's like a flower, kind of. Um, yeah, it's it's not bad. It tastes, it tastes of fake cola flavour, basically. It's a little bit softer than I thought it would be as well. It's very weird. There were like some parts of it that just came off. Um, oh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't look great on camera, to be honest. It looks all wet, which I mean it has been in my mouth. So, but yeah, um, it's nice. I I mean I like fake cola flavored stuff. So for me, this is great. Um, I don't. I'm not wild on the presentation though. Um, it's just awkward because you've got to kind of stick your, your fists to your mouth, basically. I prefer just a, a lollipop or something. It's weird, though. I'll give you that. This is a novelty. I have never had a fake ring sweet, and I probably will never will again. Um, right, on to the next snack. All right, it is time for some chocolate ice cream marshmallow. So, it's one of these things that um, I know you can get in British bakeries, basically. It's an ice cream cone, but it's marshmallow inside instead of an ice cream. And a cute ice cream eating an ice cream, I think. Uh, or maybe that's marshmallow eating an ice cream. I'm not sure exactly. I'm interested, though, because um, it's chocolate marsh... Well, chocolate ice cream marshmallow, so I'm assuming it's going to be chocolate flavoured, right? So, there we go. It looks kind of like an ice cream um, with some stuff on top. So, I'm going to go take a bite. All right, well, that is kind of nostalgic, actually. So, I used to have these as a kid. My, me and my parents would buy me them as a treat once in a while. And, honestly, it tastes and feels almost exactly like it used to. Um, it's actually a little bit sweeter, so the kind of toppings and stuff add to it. And, of course, inside there is indeed chocolate. Um, so it took like two bites because I was like, oh, I can't really see any chocolate, but then I could. I'll be honest, um, there's not an overwhelming taste of chocolate, but I think that is just because the marshmallow and toppings are so sweet as well. It kind of masks the chocolate flavour. I mean, I'm sure you could eat off the marshmallow and then just the chocolate. Um, but yeah, I think it's marshmallow probably all the way down. Um, so there's probably bits of chocolate all the way down as well. It's quite nice. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't eat these regularly. They're they're full of sugar. Uh, they're not great for you, but I mean, it's, it's quite nice. It's definitely a blast from the past. I'm glad to see that these are still being made and like kind of improved on. Because all the ones I used to have were just marshmallow. There's no fancy chocolate or other fillings. So very cool. 
Yeah, very nice. Right, on to the next snack. Alright, it is time for the DIY kit of the video. So this is the Experimental Slime DIY kit. Um, I think basically it's kind of like a colour changing thing as well. So this is going to be a slightly more annoying video to shoot actually because usually I kind of just get on with doing stuff and then show you guys at the end. But this one I think changes colour like three times. So let's take a look. So there are three different powders. There's blue, green and purple. I think that's purple. Uh, oh, and we have a stirrer. Fantastic. So, it's going to make quite viscous slime, I think. So, I read the instructions. I think you put 30 millilitres of water in there, along with a green powder, which I'll go ahead and do now. All right, so I have uh, added the 30 mils. As it happens, I basically got it bang on this time, which is great, because usually it's hard to... It's hard to uh, measure 30 millilitres. But next up is this pink packet, which I'm meant to add to that and then add this. So I'm going to add the powder here. And I'm now going to pour that blue liquid into here and mix it well, apparently. Oh, good lord, that is that is bubbling. That's I, I thought I'd just get this on camera whilst I can. That is really loud. Uh, right, I'm going to go mix this. All right, so that's mixed pretty well now. That was that was fizzing a lot when I added that blue liquid to that. Not sure exactly why that is, but, you know, that's obviously a chemical reaction. And the last part is this blue thing. I do believe I'm adding to this, and that will kind of turn into, like, thicker slime. So I'm going to go pour this into that and mix it again. All right, this, this is kind of looking weird. Uh, not going to lie. This is bubbling up something fierce now so I'm going to keep stirring for a little minute all right so um wow what a transformation this has made um as you can tell this has become like really viscous um and well slimy it is a slime kit and they ain't lying so uh it smells well it smells like a DIY kit if that makes sense um if you've ever made something like this before you know what they smell like. It's um, it's very like powdery, like sugary kind of smell and stuff. Oh my god! Wow. Right. And I go and try some of this. Um, I'm going to be very careful because I don't want this dripping on my table. Brb. All right. You know what? That is quite nice. Um, so it does taste. It it sort of feels and tastes a lot like other DIY kits as well. You. It's sort of a little bit grainy. Um, these things never mix like perfectly well. I mean, it's this is better than most DIY kits I've done. To be honest, uh, this has gone a lot more smoothly. There hasn't been any weird amounts uh, of water I've needed to combine or whatever. And the taste itself is quite interesting. It's actually kind of sour. Um, it's kind of sweet and sour. It's kind of like a um, cider uh, kind of you know flavor maybe apple sit i wouldn't say citrus more like apple or like sour in general um but it does have a sweet aftertaste as well and i gotta say i am kind of a sucker for just how how incredibly thick this has become like that is kind of impressive honestly if i was a small child i'd be impressed however i'm an adult with a mind of a small child so i'm still impressed uh yeah Overall, very fun. Um, right, on to the next snack. Alright, it's time for things to get a little bit sour. These are vinegar potato chips. Um, I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest. Uh, that person doesn't seem to be having a good time. So I've had, I've had plenty of like sour candy kind of stuff. Um, but sour savoury stuff is interesting. Uh, I'm going to have a whiff of this. Okay, I'll be honest. This smells like salt and vinegar uh, crisps. I don't know if that's big in any other country. We're in the UK. Salt and vinegar crisps, uh, walkers, or lays as they are in other countries, are really popular. So let's have a look. Now, obviously, there's no salt to this, so it's just vinegar. I mean, I really like salt and vinegar crisps, so I guess it's not actually that far away, is it? Uh, right, I'm going to go. But take a taste. Okay, this is interesting. Um, these are these are literally almost identical to salt and vinegar crisps. Um, they're they're very nice. They're like high quality potatoes and stuff. There's quite a crunch to them. 
you can taste the potato a bit which isn't always the case with a lot of uh, salt and vinegar flavors it kind of overpowers it but this is really nice um if you've never had salt and vinegar stuff before i guess this might be a little bit sour but these are really nice i'm really digging this actually um I, I, it is lacking a little bit of salt obviously but yeah honestly i think i've had as strong crisps kettle chips uh kettle do a very similar Actually, this and kettle are almost like on a level, I'd say. I love the salt and vinegar kettle chips, so... Yeah, like top marks for this. This is very nice. Kudos to uh, number number one. Well done. I, I went in a little bit apprehensive and came out really enjoying this. Very nice. Right, on to the next snack. Alright, let's get into some maple butter chocolate. Um, yeah, this is interesting. So it's maple butter flavored chocolate i think um and i think it's noir chocolate or black chocolate so i think it's sort of a sweeter version of dark chocolate i guess they are individually wrapped as well which i like Ooh, that's really cool actually there you go very gold um what does it look like oh oh never mind i thought it was like a chocolate bar but I guess it's not. It's got like chocolate bits in it, but it's like me. It's like a maple butter cookie or something. I guess cookie sticks. Right, I'm gonna go have a bite. Wow, that is really nice. I didn't know what to expect, but that is really nice. So the maple flavour um, is really strong. It's like smoky maple. I guess I haven't had a ton of maple syrup in the past, but. That's amazing. Um, the texture is like really nice, it's really crunchy. Um, it is like having a thick cookie, obviously in like strips or whatever. That's really good. That Wow, That I think that's my favorite thing of this video so far. Um, I didn't expect a ton, but like, man, the maple flavor is so strong. The chocolate, not so much. Um, I mean, it's dark chocolate, so it's not gonna be super flavorful. You don't get a massive hit of chocolate, but you do get a massive hit of maple. So if you like the flavour, absolutely go ahead and try these because that's really nice. Um, these are incredibly Moorish. I'm going to have to like stop myself from eating the whole pack because uh, these are incredible. Actually, looking at it, it should have told me it was a biscuit there. But yeah, that is really nice. Holy crap. I I wasn't expecting that. I'm, I'm used to like really, you know, nice snacks, but... That's thoroughly impressed me. I may end up buying some of these separately. That, damn. Right, uh, on to the next snack. All right, it is time for Orion's Mini Fresh Ramune. So this is quite interesting. It's like a plastic tube, basically. And they're kind of like mints, but obviously they are Ramune flavored. So, uh, right, let's, aha. There you go. Hang on, let me get a couple. There you go. So they're very, they're small, kind of round mint things. So I'm going to go try them. That is really refreshing, actually. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're very small, obviously. You know, a handful of them uh, disappears quite quickly in the mouth. Honestly, yeah, that, that's that's really nice. It tastes quite strongly of Ramune. Um, and I can see them as, you know, little little sweet hit things. The only downside is, the annoying thing, is once you peel this off, it's kind of open. I mean, you could put it back on, but there's no... I mean, you, you could do that, I guess. But yeah, it just feels a little bit awkward that there's no, like, lid to pop up, because I don't think I'll eat the entire tube all at once. But very cool, though. I do love Ramune candy. Um, when I first saw this, I thought it was mint, so I was like, eh. Mints are fine, but yeah, that is really nice flavour. Um, yeah, kudos to them. Right, on to the next snack. It's time for some strawberry mints. So, if you remember from the New Year crate, this is a very, very cute uh, box of strawberry mints, basically, kind of after one of five, I think, Japanese transport vehicles. This obviously is a kind of Superman-esque uh, car that says... Sayaka, and then it's the rest is in kanji, sadly. So let's open up the back, I think. Okay, so it's, it's in like a packet of its own. That's cool, so I can I can keep the truck if I want. Uh, oh, good lord, these are tiny. Um, 
Right, I'm going to off camera pour some into my palm because if I try and do it on camera these will spill everywhere. Alright, here they are. So, time to try them out. I am curious to see how strawberry -y they are and how minty they are. Alright, I've got to say, I'm really not digging this. Um, so I've, I've had quite a few because the, the first like couple I had, I couldn't really make out the flavour much, but... So it does have quite a, you know, strongish strawberry flavour. The strawberry flavour is quite nice. But then like, part way through, I think like the mint or something hits. And it's got a really weird aftertaste. Um, I don't know if it's because like strawberry and mint just doesn't blend very well. But it goes from like sweet to like kind of sharp. Like a sharp taste. Not bitter per se, but it's not sweet either. It's like, it just comes in and like erases the sweetness and just leaves you with a weird aftertaste. Um, yeah, not gonna lie, I, I, love the, I love the little cardboard truck and stuff, obviously. Uh, very cute. The sweets themselves, um, no, I mean, I think this is probably <laughs> my least favourite thing I've had in quite a few episodes of Japanese Snack Reviews now. Um, I, d I don't I don't recommend uh, even if they are cute cardboard trucks I I yeah that's 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 a no from me uh, right hopefully the next thing is nicer all right so this is the last snack of this video and that is the salty caramel scone um, now I think a few videos back I did do another version of scone which was I think prone or something like that. Uh, so this is a potato chip kind of brand, and this is this is weird. This is caramel flavour. So I, for one, I'm incredibly curious because uh, my mind's going to be imagining, you know, savoury flavours. But uh, I guess my mouth's going to be telling me, you know, sweet stuff. So there is a scone. I really like these. They're like. Um, kind of knickknacks, which is a UK thing, or um, uh, Cheetos uh, in America, like the crunchy version of Cheetos. Right, I'm gonna go have a taste. Hmm, so, those are really nice, sort of. Um, it, it, it's a weird combo, I can't quite describe it really, because you do immediately get the like salty caramel kind of flavour, so it's a little bit savoury, a little bit sweet, and then you taste more of the caramel, but then the rest of it just tastes like, you know, crunchy kind of corn snack things. Which are kind of savoury again. So it kind of overrules the sweetness. There's a bit of a, like a sweet aftertaste really, but overall, I don't know, it it doesn't really work, I don't think. Um, they just taste like kind of sweet versions of corn snacks, but to the point that you're kind of like, oh, these could just be different kind of snacks. Like... I love salted caramel stuff, but I just don't think this works particularly well. They could either do with making it more, like, sweeter, or just, I guess, doing it in a different way. Because, yeah, this, it doesn't fully work. I don't know, maybe it'll grow on me by the time I get to the end of the bag, but for now, it's, it's pretty decent, but I wouldn't go on my way to buy any more of it. And on that note, that was a horrible segue, uh, time to wrap up this episode of Japanese Snack Reviews. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, I will be leaving a playlist to my other Japanese Snack Reviews video there, and a recommended video by YouTube there. Um, I have lots more to do, got lots more snacks to go through, so don't worry, I have loads left. I realise I haven't done any drinks the last, like, two... Uh, two, maybe three episodes now. So I will be getting around to the drinks soon. I just forgot about them, literally. So I might do like two next episodes. Don't hold me to that, because I might forget about them again. But let, but you know, who knows. Anyway, uh, let me know if you've tried any of these snacks below. Um, you know, I'm always curious to see what other people feel. Uh, right, so until next time, goodbye.